Hello and welcome. Now we continue with chapter 2 on vectors. Vectors is a topic which you would already have covered in school, although at university we're going to do it more rigorously, we're going to do it in more detail. On the cover slide you can see I've included two pictures. The first picture is a photograph taken from a cockpit. Um, vectors is something that pilots need to work with uh, every day. For example, they need to know how far away they are from, from their current destination and in what direction they need to, to fly, which constitutes um, a vector. The second picture is some signpost and it's very interesting. It has you know a whole lot of uh, vectors. It has a whole lot of arrows pointing in different directions and these arrows include the, both the direction and the distance to other cities, which of course constitutes uh, vectors. After this chapter, you need to be able to know the difference between vectors and scalars. You need to be able to resolve a vector into its um, components. You need to be able to explain and be able to use uh, unit vectors. And um, then also going to need to calculate the resultant uh, magnitude and direction of adding a number of vectors together. And most importantly, we're going to be solving problems uh, on these concepts. Um, in your maths course, you'll also be covering vectors. So as you work through through vectors in physics and maths at the same time, I hope that together they can you know give you a greater insight into the concept of, of vectors. We move along then to the definition of uh, vectors and scalars. So a scalar um, is a quantity that is completely specified by a single value and appropriate units and it has no direction. So if you think of an example of a scalar, it could be for example um, a distance, you know, 25 meters. Um, the single value is the 25 and the appropriate unit is the meter. Um, another example could be the mass of a rock. Perhaps the rock is 5 kilograms. Right. Both of those examples have no direction. Whereas when it comes to a vector quantity, it has a, a number, a unit, as well as a direction. So we may speak about a displacement. You may say, in order to get to my friend's house, I need to go um, 10 kilometers east. Right. So it has a number 10 a unit kilometers and it has a direction east or you may be referring to a, um, a force you may say the force on this object is um, 10 newtons downwards again there we have a direction associated let's take a look at an example now illustrating the difference between scalars and vectors so the ex example says a particle travels from A to B along the path shown by the dotted red line. So for us, let's think of our particle as being a bug. We have a bug that's walking along this uh, dotted red line. Um, the distance, uh, this is the distance traveled and it's the scalar. So the dotted red line represents the distance that the bug walks and this is a scalar. Example, the distance might be 5.2 meters, right? Um, separate to the distance traveled, we have a second quantity, which we call the displacement. The displacement is a vector which points from the start at A to the final position at B. So it's a vector because it has some direction and it has some magnitude. It also would you know, have some length, some distance. So the displacement is a vector pointing from start to finish which is different to the distance, which is the actual, you know, physical distance that the bug walked. Let's take a look at this point then. Uh, the displacement is independent of the path taken between the two points. For us to understand what they, they're referring to there, let, let's think of a second bug. And the second bug starts walking in this direction. Perhaps it take, takes a loop here. Perhaps it walks out here, right? Takes another loop. It heads, starts heading towards B. The distance that the second bug is, is walking is a lot further than the distance that the first uh, bug walked. But imagine the second bug also ends up exactly at point B. 
if we look at the displacement for the second bag, we're interested only in, in, in the start and the final position and we draw a vector pointing in that direction for the displacement and we see the displacement is the same for bag A as for or the first bag as the second bag. So this means that the displacement is independent of the path taken between the two points. We now take a look at two problems to test your understanding of these concepts. We're going to start with problem two, which is or question two, which is a little simpler than problem one. Question two says a turtle is walking such that the distance it walks changes with time, while the angle of its displacement remains constant with time. And you ask to explain, making use of a sketch, how this is possible. I'd like you to take out a piece of paper, pause the video, and give this a try. Once you've done so, you can, can continue checking and see what the answer is. Right, uh, for, for question two, if we look at the solution, we look into for, for the case where um, the distance that the turtle walks changes with time, whereas the angle it walks remains constant. Instead of a turtle, I have um, a car. And if I'm, um, you know, to let the car start at position A, and then imagine the car drives in a straight line uh, uh, along this uh, green line. So as time goes by, the car is moving along the green line in a straight line. Then we've described um, the, the situation in question two. What we see is the distance is changing as time goes by. The distance that the car travels gets uh, bigger as time goes by, whereas the angle of the displacement uh, remains the same. This angle here, theta, this angle will, will you know, remain the same. Of course, you could have drawn the car going in any, any direction or the turtle. It could have headed off in this direction, right? As long as it goes in a straight line. Question one is similar, except we, in this case, we asked a turtle is walking such that the distance it walks changes with time, whereas the magnitude of its displacement remains constant with time. So the solution to this is that if we consider the displacement relative to point A, then the turtle is going to be moving in a circle. As you can see, as the turtle moves in a circle around a point A, as time goes by, the distance that it walks changes, but the magnitude of its displacement remains constant with time. Here, the magnitude of its displacement is the radius of the circle, right? And at any 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 given time, it's going to have a different displacement. The vector is pointing in a different direction, but the magnitude of the displacement is always going to be the same. So the magnitude of the displacement rem remains constant. Of course, the magnitude of the displacement remains constant, and it remains the radius of the circle, we call it R. So now we're going to be talking about vector components, and we're going to be talking about the terminology and the notation that we use. So this is a very important um, you know, section, and we're going to summarize lots of information on, on this one page. So first, let's um, think of some vector that we have. I'm going to, uh, you know, just draw it pointing in this direction. It's a vector. I'm going to give it a name and I'm going to call it vector A. Um, it's a vector because it has some magnitude. Maybe this is five centimeters and it's pointing in some direction. Uh, when we use the notation, we use the notation A with an arrow on top to represent a vector. Um, sometimes you could see people write it simply with an A with a bar instead of arrow. That might be like an acceptable alternative notation. If we're interested in the scalar quantity, the length of this vector, as we said, it might be five centimeters. Then the notation we use, the way that we write this, is simply um, a without the arrow on top. You know, this represents the scalar, the scalar quantity. 
An alternative notation or another way of writing the scalar um, scalar quantity would be to put these two bars on either side. These are called modulus bars. This is a modulus notation and this will also refer to the scalar uh, quantity. So these are just uh, two ways of saying, you know, um, we need to, 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 we're speaking about the length of, of this vector. It's two different notations, two different ways of writing that. Of course, um, we give these axes names, right? So this is, is the X and the Y axis. That's the names. On, on this side of the axis, we're going to have the X is going to have positive uh, values. Whereas on this side of the axis, um, x is going to have negative values. This is going to be, up is going to be the positive um, side of the y-axis, and y is going to be the negative um, side of the y-axis. For example, 100 y will be um, up here, whereas minus 100 in, in the y direction will be on, on, the, on the lower side. The next um, thing we need to, to keep in mind from school, we dealt with various trigonometric functions, um, cos, sine, tan, and we were interested to know the, the sines of the different angles in different quadrants. And there we made use of this cost diagram, or perhaps you had an, an, another, another name for it, another way of remembering. But what this diagram told us is that in the first quadrant, all the, the, the trigonometric quantities, cos, sine, and tan, they're all positive. In the second quadrant, only sine is positive. Here, only tan is positive. Here, only cos is, is positive. Right, so we, you know, summarizing everything about vectors on, on this page. L let's move on to, to redraw this uh, vector A. And let's just uh, redraw it over here quickly. As I said, this is going to be the x-axis, this is going to be the y-axis, and here we have a, uh, which is a vector. The next thing we can do is we can uh, take this vector and we can break it up into its components. Its components point uh, along, along the axes. So the first component of a would be a vector pointing along the x-direction. And this vector, we give the name a x. This subscript x tells us that it's the x component of a. Again, we need to include an arrow on top because, because this is a, a vector. So this is the x component vector of a. And that's the notation that we're going to use. Secondly, of course, there's also um, a y component. And the y component uh, points uh, in this direction and this um, vector a y this is the notation that we're going to use right these two vectors are by definition of the axes they're perpendicular to each other and they form a, a right uh, angle uh, like this as shown here we can see that if we add vector um, x and vector y together, sorry, if we add the x component of vector a and the y component of vector a together, then we get vector a again. So the no notation we would use to, to write that, we would say vector ax plus vector ay is equal to vector a. That's what, that's what this equation uh, is telling us. But now, when it comes to, to, to representing the different component vectors, we are, can also write that mathematically using uh, trigonometric functions. So notice here that we have a, a right uh, angle triangle, and we can make use of that fact to... Um, find equations for ax and ay which is is what what we're going to do now for the two components the first thing we take note is that you know we're going to call this angle theta 
when we define our angles, we're always going to start at the positive x-axis and go around in an anti-clockwise direction until we, we come to the vector. So we have that, that angle theta. Here you can see in our right angle triangle, we can see that um, sine of theta, sine is equal to opposite over um, hypotenuse. So sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of theta is equal to ay over a. The in the notation I've used, I've just used the scalar quantities because I'm interested in the length of, of these vectors, right? So the, the vector notation isn't, isn't included. What we can do is we can rearrange this equation and we can make um, Ay the, the, the formula of the equation and then we can see, see Ay is equal to A sine theta. And what we have here is an expression for the y component of A. So we have an expression that we're going to use to, to find out, um, you know, to mathematically find out what A, Y is. It gives us just the magnitude of A, Y. It doesn't give us the direction. We already know the direction is along the Y axis. Similarly, what we can do is we can we can um, look at this triangle again, and we can consider cos of theta. So we can see cos of theta is equal to um, cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be a x over a. And here we see that um, a x is equal to a cos theta. So now, that's really cool, because what we have now is an equation for the x component of vector a. This is the equation that we're going to use for the x component of, of vector a. If we would like to fi um, find out what the magnitude of a is, so if we want to know what is the magnitude of a, What is the magnitude? What is the size of A? Then to do this, what we can do is we can use Pythagoras. So Pythagoras tells us that in this right angle triangle, the size of A squared is equal to the size of AX squared that's the, the one side, plus the, the other side of the triangle, Ay squared. So this then tells us that, um, you know, A is equal to the square roots. We need to get rid of this squared sign here. We're just interested in the square root. So A is equal to the square root of Ax squared plus a y squared. So here we have another important equation and what this equation tells us is that if we want to find out uh, what is the the size of a then what we need to do is we need to to square the x component and square the y component add them together and take the the square root. So this is this is another important equation for us to 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 use. The final thing that we might uh, want to find out is we might want to find out what is theta if we're interested to find uh, theta. To find theta, we make use of the fact that in our, in our um, triangle, uh, we make use of the tan identity. So tan of theta is equal to tan is opposite over adjacent. So it's going to be Ay over Ax. Right, so there's an equation for tan of theta in terms of Ay over Ax. Um, if we're interested to find out what the value of theta 
itself is, then we take the octane of a y over a x. So these then are um, important equations. Let's mark the, the final equation. We've summarized many important uh, principles and equations on one page. Let's also take a look through your notes and see how they uh, discuss these uh, important uh, principles. The first uh, princip principle says AX and AY are the component vectors of A and they follow the rules of vectors. So we saw that over here, right? AX and AY are the components of vector A. This was another way to write it, vector A is AX plus AY. In the second point, the, the, the text notes that AX and AY are scalars and they refer to the components of A. See the notation that, 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 that this text is used. In, they, they write in vectors in bold and they write in scalars as, you know, normal font. So for us, we said the notation that we're going to use is we're going to represent vectors by having an arrow um, above and scalars by without the arrow or with the modular sign. You can take a look uh, yourself at this page where they speak about uh, the components and they say a component is a projection along the two axes and any vector can be completely described uh, by its components. Uh, once again, um, this is what we said in this part of our, our summary uh, here. On the next page, they go into more detail about the, the components. Assume you are given a vector A, it can be expressed in terms of, of its two component vectors, AX and AY, and these three uh, um, vectors, they form a right angle triangle and we can add them together as, as shown um, by that equation. Um, um, again, this, this slide you can look through yourself as we discussed by drawing uh, AX and AY head to tail, we're able to add the two vectors together and then get uh, vector A, which completes the triangle. The X component and the Y components are given by these two equations here. AX is equal to um, A cos theta and AY is equal to A cos theta. This assumes that the angle theta is measured with respect to the X axis. This is an important point and um, the angle, this angle theta, it's always measured by starting at the x-axis and then moving in the anti-clockwise direction until you come to the, to the vector. We're going to see some examples of that coming up. Finally, um, the components are the legs of the triangle whose hypotenuse is of length a as we said this this length is equal to the square root of the the sum of the squares given by this equation and then we may use tan to find out what theta is with respect to the positive x-axis finally we did also speak about uh, the cast diagram and the sign of different uh, vectors i would like us now to look at an example and the question or the example is, find the X components and the Y components of the vector for each of these four different uh, cases. So in each of the four cases, uh, we're going to be using the equation to find the X component. Fx is F cos theta, Fy is Y sine theta. But the point I want to you know, really highlight with these examples is that we need to be very careful when choosing the angle. The way for us to choose the angle is always to start uh, at, at the positive x-axis and to go anti-clockwise and then to see what that angle is going to be. So here in this first example, you can see the angle is going to be 15 degrees. So the x component is going to be the length of the vector, which is 10. And um, then it's going to be cos of 15 degrees. And if you use your calculator, 
then you can calculate this to be 9.6 newtons. All right. For the second case, we again just going to use 10 sine of uh, 15 degrees. Using your calculator, you should be able to calculate that to be 2.6 uh, newtons. So whenever you do a calculation like this, I want you to check uh, your answer, to check if the sign is what you would expect it to be. Here we would expect the x component to the x component vector to be positive, and we see indeed it is positive, it's 9.6. And here the, the y component should also be positive, that would be a vector pointing in this direction. When we come to the second example, again we have a vector of 10 uh, newtons, and now they've given us the this angle as being 40 degrees. When we use our theta, remember our theta is always starting at the at the positive x-axis, going around anti-clockwise until you 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 get to to this um, vector. So you can see if we had gone all the way around, it would have been 180 degrees, but but we going 40 degrees less than, than, than all the way around to this line. So for us, theta is going to be um, 180 minus 40. 180 degrees minus 40 degrees is going to be our theta. So that is equal to 140 40 degrees. Then once we perform this calculation, we can say, um, the x component is equal to 10 cos of 140 degrees and the y component is 10 sine of uh, 140 degrees. If you use your calculator, you'll find out that 10 cos of 140 degrees is minus 7.7 um, .7 newtons and 10 sine of 140 degrees is equal to um, plus 6.4 newtons. Again, we check to just the signs to make sure that they're what we expect. Here we have an x component pointing in the negative direction. That would be, you know, the x component pointing in this direction. That's fine. That, that's good. That's what we expect. And we expect the y component to be positive. So this is a, a quick uh, sanity check, a quick check that we've uh, done it correctly. If you don't uh, use choose theta correctly, what's going to happen is the signs of your vectors are going to be wrong. Let's let's have a look at these two uh, the further two examples. So for the last two examples, we would use exactly the same uh, e equations, you know, cos theta, sine theta to calculate the components. But let's just check what angles we would use for for the first one, um, we given that this angle here is, is 10 degrees, so the angle that we need to use is theta starting at the at the positive um, x-axis and going all the way around. So for us, you know, theta would be equal to, it would be equal to 270 degrees. If we'd gone all the way to, to the negative y-axis, it would have been 270 degrees. So for us, it would be 270 degrees minus 10 degrees because we went 10 degrees less so that is equal to 260 260 degrees that's the angle you would use in these formulas for the last um, example we would you know use theta again starting at the positive x-axis and going around anti-clockwise and here we're going to find that theta is equal to 360 degrees minus 45 degrees. If we had gone all the way around, it would have been 360, but we're going 45 degrees less. So 360 minus 45 is 315 degrees. Unit vectors. A unit vector is a dimensionless vector with magnitude of exactly 1. So that's to say it's dimensionless, it doesn't have units such as meters or, or kilograms, and its size is just one. The second point tells us what you know unit vectors, why, why they're useful, why we have them. 
Unit vectors are used to speci specify a direction and they have no other physical significance. So you can think of unit vectors as little pointing vectors that point in, in a direction and the only you know, use or only significance is to, to define that direction. And um, if we uh, take a look, then we have unit vectors for the three dimensions of space, X, Y, and Z. Um, those are the three dimensions of space. We have unit vectors, R hat, J hat, and K hat. Uh, we call them R hats because the notation we use is the R with a little hat on top, J hat, J with a little hat. That's how we write it, R hat, J hat, and K hat. So the symbols, these represent the unit vectors. And um, you know, the axes follow the alphabet, they go X, Y, Z. Similarly, the, the unit vectors follow the alphabet, they go R, J, K. So the R hat unit vector belongs to the X axis. A J hat will always point in the direction of the Y axis. And K hat will always point in the direction of the Z axis. So these three unit vectors, they form a set of uh, mutually perpendicular vectors in the right-handed coordinate system. So this is to say they're all at 90 degrees, as you can see in the picture. Remember that the, the magnitude of the... Of the length of R hat is equal to the length of J hat is equal to the length of, of K hat. So um, a, AX and um, AX is a vector is the same as AX component in the R hat and AY uh, as a vector is the same as AY in the J hat. Remember that this textbook is using notation. If they use bold, then they're referring to a vector. So what we're saying, instead of writing AX vector, we can write it as AX magnitude in the direction of r hat and similarly um you know the the the, the y component vector can be written as as the magnitude uh, and a unit vector pointing in the j hat um, direction then um, a complex vector can be expressed using this this notation so vector a is given by some magnitude AX, which points in the I-hat direction, plus AY, which points in the J-hat or the, or the Y direction, as uh, shown here. So the problem says, let us have two, two, two different components, the X component given by the square root of three in the I-hat direction, the Y component given by minus one in the J-hat direction, and then the resultant vector r will be given by the sum of these two vectors. This is the information we're given. What we asked is to make a rough sketch showing the components and the resultant vector r. So what I've done beforehand is I've drawn um, the x and the y axis as shown. So the first thing we should do, we can draw in, we can draw in the x component. So the x component has length uh, square root of three along the I hat direction. I hat direction is in the X direction. So if I draw, um, if I draw the X component in, then it will look like this and it will come to a point here on the X axis where this is square root of three. That's the, that's the length of the X component along the X axis. And um, when it comes to us drawing in the Y component, we can do that. We see that RY is equal to minus one in the J hat. So it's, you know, it's, it must go in the minus um, Y direction and it must go down to point minus one. So this is RY. So we've drawn in our, our two components. And the next thing we can do is we can draw in the, the vector R, the resultant vector R. So the resultant vector R is going to be the sum of these two, which 
if we were to add them together we would get a vector that looks approximately as such shown. Remember my sketch isn't uh, to scale but this gives some indication to us of how it looks. Um, another thing that's of interest to us to begin to think about is the angle theta. So the angle theta starts at the x-axis, goes around anti-clockwise, and then it comes to this point here. So this is how our angle theta is defined. Right, so this is then is the solution to part um, A of the, of, of the question. For part B, we asked to calculate the magnitude and the angle of the resultant vector r. So we asked to calculate how long uh, r is and we asked to calculate in which direction it is, so which, what, what the value of theta is. So for b, if we want to start with um, calculating the magnitude, then we know that the rule that we use is Pythagoras. So, um, sorry, this shouldn't have a subscript here. The magnitude of r, that's the square root of rx squared plus ry squared. So the magnitude of r is equal to the square root of uh, the x component squared plus the y component squared. So in our case, we have the magnitude of r is equal to the square root. The x component is the square root of 3 squared plus minus 1 squared. So this then, of course, is equal to the square root of 3 plus 1, which is equal to the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. Because it's a length, we only, um, you know, interest ourselves with the positive square root. Finally, we need to calculate the angle theta. And you'll remember theta is equal to um, arctan of the y component over the x component. In this case, we have the y component is minus 1. So it's octan of, of minus 1 and the x component is the square root of 3. To deal with um, the sign of this ratio, we need to take note of which quadrant this vector is living in. And the, this vector is in the fourth quadrant, which is the 360 degree minus quadrant. So to correctly calculate this angle, then we write this as 360 degrees minus. Now, of course, um, we use the positive uh, values, the absolute values of these signs. So we've taken this negative um, one into account here by writing 360 minus. So this is just um, the positive ratio minus octane of 1 over 3. And if you use your calculator, you find that this is 360 degrees minus 30 degrees, which is equal to 330 degrees is the final answer. Here we have some rules for adding vectors, making use of unit vectors. So the two vectors that we consider in adding is the vector A to the vector B. Um, the notation used, they've re rewritten vector A as an, an a AX in the I hat direction plus a, a Y in the J hat direction. The correct way for us to, to add the vectors is to regroup uh, the terms. So to, you know, have everything with an I hat, every, all the X components added together in the I hat direction and all the Y components together in the J hat direction. So this is just another way of saying that we add in all the, the, the X components together and all the, the Y components together. Um, and then, you know, once you've, you've found the resultant vector, you can go ahead and, and find the, the magnitude of the resultant vector as well as the, the angle using these two formulas. To do this, it's a little bit, um, you know, easier if we consider an actual example. So here's a question where in the question we've been given two vectors 
So we're given vector A and vector B, and we asked to, to find out what is the, the resultant vector when we add um, A and B. So the way we do that, let's call the, our resultant vector R. This is going to be equal to simply, you know, take the, 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 the X component of each. So this is going to be 2 and minus 10, minus 10 coming from there. And let's have that in the i-hat direction. And then what we also still need to do is to add the uh, y component vectors and have them in the j-hat direction. So this is going to be 3 minus 2 in the j-hat. And then we find the resultant vector will be minus 8 in the i-hat direction and plus 1 in the j-hat direction, which then gives us our result. So to end off this chapter, we're going to look at the process for adding uh, vectors together. And, um, you know, the way to do that is shown on the screen. It's to first calculate the X and the Y components of all of the vectors or each of the vectors. Then to add all the X components together, to add all the Y components together to get RY, the resultant Y. And then from the resultant X and the resultant Y that you found in step two and three, we calculate the magnitude and the direction of the resultant vector as shown. In school, you may have added vectors together, you know, using other methods such as graphically or maybe using the parallelogram rule. But um, at university, we aren't going to make use of those uh, methods uh, because you'll be given more complicated uh, problems. And uh, this, this, these steps shown on this slide is a more general uh, way of solving uh, all problems. I think as before, it's, it's best illustrated by means of us looking at a problem. So the problem uh, we're going to be looking at, it refers to a hiker. A hiker begins a trip by walking 25 kilometers south uh, east from her car. She stops and sets up her tent for the night. On the second day, she walks, um, you know, in, in 40 kilometers in the direction 60 degrees north of east at which she discovers a forest ranger tower. Then we ask to determine the components of her displacement each day and determine the uh, her, her resultant trip in terms of uh, magnitude and a direction. So what we have is a person walking around on multiple days. Each day she walks, there's a displacement uh, vector and we'll need to add these uh, displacement vectors together to find uh, the resultant vector. A really good way, way for us to start and a way for us to start all of these problems is to have a, a figure of, of what's happening. Either you'll be given the figure or you'll need to, to generate the figure. In this case, we'll need to uh, create the, 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 to generate the figure ourselves. So taking a look at this, then um, let's let the hacker start here on, on day one. Um, they say a hacker begins a trip by walking 25 kilometers southeast from her car. So the first thing we need to know is that we've been given the angle in um, you know a rather unfamiliar way. We've been given it in terms of compass coordinates. So southeast means halfway between east and south. So if we if we draw the compass north, east, south, west, southeast means halfway between south and east. So that's at 45 degrees between uh, south and east. And she walks a distance of 25 uh, kilometers. So the distance she walks is uh, 25 kilometers in this direction. Um, because it's southeast, this angle is going to be 45 degrees. And this angle here is also going to be 45 degrees. It will be good for us to call her, her the distance she walks on day one. We can call this vector A. Um, she stops and sets up her tent for the night. 
On the second day, she walks 40 kilometers in a direction 60 degrees north of east. Again, we, we um, given given the, the bearing, the direction in compass coordinates, so we'll need to, to make a little sketch to figure out uh, how that looks. So northeast, south, west. And this time she's walking in a direction 60 degrees north of east. So that's to say that when we want to figure out what this direction is, we need to, to go to east, 60 degrees north of east, means start at east, and then go 60 degrees towards the north. Going 60 degrees towards the north. And then this will give us, this will give us um, the bearing, right? And it's 40, 40 kilometers. 40 kilometers. This is B. Vector B, its length is 40 kilometers. Right. And we've been asked in A to determine the components and then in B to determine um, the, or B and C, to determine the resultant a um, magnitude and and angle. Of course, the resultant vector for her trip is going to be this vector um, from the start, where she started, to where she finished. Right? This is going to be the resultant vector. And this is the vector that we've been asked to find. Now that we have our figure, next what we need to do is break the vector up into its components um, so that we can add them. The way I like to do all these problems is once I have the figure, I like to make a table. So in the first column of the table, I give the vector's name. In the second column of the table, I'm going to calculate its x component. The x component. Um, the x component and in the final column I'm going to calculate the y component. The y component. So let's, let's uh, set up our table. In this case we have uh, two vectors. We have vector A and we have vector B. And what we're going to be doing once we have each of the components we're going to add them to find out the resultant vector. So the resu resultant vector is going to be found by adding, and we always call that vector R. Vector A, B, and vector R. So this is the, the form of the table I use to solve all all similar types of problems. Um, for us to calculate the x component of A, then we use the generic formula, sort of um, Ax is equal to A cos of theta. And for us to calculate the y component, we're going to use Ay is equal to A sin of theta. Of course, to calculate the, the, the components of B, then we're going to be using similar equations, cos of theta and by is equal to b sine theta. So we can fill this in our table. Let's get busy on the x components. So the you know the distance for 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 angle A is well, the distance for A is 25 kilometers, so this is going to be 25 cos. Now we need to take real care in choosing which angle we're going to use here. And remember, the way in which our angles are defined is to start at the, the x-axis and then to move anti-clockwise around to where we come to the vector. So in this case, we can see the angle is going to be 360 minus 45 degrees, which is going to be 315 degrees. 315 degrees. Take care to use the, um, the angle correctly. 
So this is going to be 315 degrees. And here we're going to have uh, again 25 sine of 315 degrees. Um, when it comes to, to dealing with angle B, the distance is going to be equal to 40 cos. And in this case, the angle is going to be the angle starting at the positive x-axis and uh, moving anticlockwise upwards until we come to the, the vector. And there we see it's 60 degrees. So this is the angle that we were given. So this is going to be um, 40 cos 60 degrees. And this is going to be equal to 40 sine of our 60 degrees. Okay, so next what we do is you can take your calculator and calculate what the, the quantities are. You'll find that this is 17.7. 17.7. Of course, the unit is, is kilometers. And AY is going to be using your calculator to calculate that. You're going to find that that's minus 17.7. From the sign of uh, uh, from the sign of our um, of our quantities, it's good to just check if we're on the right track. So what we have is for um, a x we have a positive value, uh, and you know this this vector is having a positive component in the x direction as we would expect, and it's having a negative component in the y direction. And that's also, also what we would expect. So the signs that we have, this positive sign, this negative sign, it, it agrees with what we see in our picture. When we calculate the components of uh, B, then we find that this is 20.0. And when we calculate this, then we find that this is equal to um, 34.6. Next, we're interested to find out what the resultant uh, is. So for us, the resultant x component is found by adding these two numbers together. And this is 37.7 kilometers. And adding these two numbers together, we get um, Ry is equal to... I get 16.9. So let's take a look at how far we are in solving this uh, problem then. The first thing we asked to do in question A is to determine the components of the hacker's displacement each day. Here we have it in these four blocks shown here. The second part is to determine the components of the hacker's resultant displacement for the trip. That's these two values here. Um, but then we also asked to find an expression in terms of unit vectors. So the expression in terms of unit vectors is the resultant vector is equal to the magnitude of the x component in the i-hat direction plus the magnitude of the y component in the j-hat direction. Here we actually have values for each of these two Rx and Ry, and we can fill in our values as 37.7 kilometers in the i hat plus Ry is um, 16.9 kilometers in the j hat. So this is this is for the answers question B then. For question C, we asked to calculate the both the resultant magnitude and the direction of the resultant vector describing the trip. So for us to calculate a resultant uh, magnitude, then remember the expression that we use is um, comes from Pythagoras. So it's the square roots of the, the x component squared plus the, the y component squared. Square roots are the sum of the squares. So for us, it's going to be the square root of 37.7 squared 
plus 16.9 squared. If you use your calculator, you can calculate that out to be um, 41.3. So that's the that's the magnitude of the the resultant. There's also a need for us to calculate the angle associated with the final displacement. So to calculate an angle, um, we make use of the formula theta is equal to arctan r y over r x. Now. Remember, we need to make sure that we have our vectors in the correct uh, quadrant. And just to do a, a quick check of which quadrant we, we need to be have our uh, solution in, we take a look at the x and the y axis, and we look at the you know the sign of the x and the y components. So R x has a a positive uh, sign, so it means it's pointing in this direction. R y also has a positive sign. So when we are speaking about our resultant vector, we expect our resultant vector to be pointing in some direction as shown here. So this, you know, isn't a scale, but it certainly tells us that um, our angle needs to be in the first quadrant. And in fact, that means that we can just make use of Arctan of um, the ROI components, 16.9 over 37.7. We just, in the first quadrant, we don't need to worry about 360 minus, 360 plus, 180 minus, 180 plus. We can just make use of these uh, quantities. If you use your calculator, then you'll find this angle to be 24.1 degrees which is the final um, quantity we were asked to calculate under question C. You can expect to encounter many different kinds of uh, vector addition problems. In the first kind, we saw, you know, we added two displacements, which are vectors together. You can also add forces together as shown in this example. So this example, I'll leave it uh, for you to do on your own, although I've also posted uh, the solution here. It speaks of um, two people pulling on a bull with uh, two different forces, F1 and F2. And we asked to calculate the resultant uh, force. And the way we do that is following the same recipe as before, uh, starting with a diagram. Um, being careful how we define the angles in terms of, you know, starting at the x-axis and rotating around until we hit the vectors. Then moving on to making a table and breaking the, the vectors up into their components, finding the magnitude of the resultant using Pythagoras' equation, and finding the angle, taking special care to make sure that we give the solution in the co correct uh, quadrant. In part B of the question, we actually asked to calculate the force that a third person would have to exert on the mule um, to make the resultant force be zero. So we've been asked for, you know, what force would need to be applied to cancel out uh, this resultant force that we found. And of course, if you want to cancel out a force, um, what you do is you need to have a force in the opposite direction. It needs to be the same uh, magnitude, the same magnitude, but it needs to be in the opposite direction to this. If we are um, working in the opposite direction, then that means that we need to add 180 degrees uh, to the angle. So the angle is no longer 77.8 uh, degrees, but it's 77.8 plus 180, which gives 257.8 degrees. That concludes this chapter on vectors.